part where we see technology evolving and all kinds of things are going to happen. And it's certainly true we will see extraordinary things in terms of techno leaps, intelligent clothes, uh, the ability to re-engineer the human eye, to create a biodigital brain uh, using uh, uh, the growth of brain cells. This is actually history now. Brain cells onto the surface of chips. They sense the growth. Uh, they sense the chip. They grow along the surface. They communicate with each other. This is an actual photograph. They form nerve to nerve connections, and they also form nerve to chip connections. This is a biodigital device. And you can create one in your own brain automatically. You just put a chip inside your head. The brain cells grow over the surface, and they start to communicate with it. Amazing. Put your hands up if you would like one inside your head. <laughs> oh, one or two would. Put your hands up if definitely not. You see, the future is not about technology. It's not about what we can do. It's a question of whether you actually want to buy it. So it's a question of emotion once again. Um, again, RFID technology, you know all about it. Intelligent paper, the ability to put one trillion devices online, each of them the size of a single grain of sand, with no battery, no power source, just sucking energy out of the air using the, uh, r the, the, uh, the aerial of the device. There are already maybe 10 billion of these in the environment. Each of them will last 100 years. What happens to that? Well, it's a different kind of way of thinking. Forget about the online world. We're thinking about a totally wired world. We're talking about a world in 10 years' time where 200 of you would have, I would imagine, at least two or 3,000 RFIDs on you without you even knowing about it. They'll be in your tie, in your clothes, perhaps even in the banknotes that you have in your pockets. This is a totally wired, totally extraordinarily joined up world. Today's world will be laughed at, the world of 7 billion downloads. So what was an app? Um, Facebook, which with its starting to connect individuals together, we forget how quickly this has happened. If you think of, uh, um, say, uh, the fact that 85% of all new, new mobile phones sold next year will surf the internet, 85%. You think of YouTube, the largest TV station in the world, which did not exist four years ago, five years ago. A friend of mine, I, me I met him, uh, uh, Chad Hurley, who, who started this, this uh, thing. I actually interviewed him uh, at a Google event. And I asked him, I said, what did it feel like? Uh, you were starting with two computers in a bedroom in your house, and then one day, uh, Google comes along and they offer you a check after 18 months for $1.7 billion. He said it felt a little strange. <laughs> I said, so what's next? He said, I have no idea. So this has sprung from nothing. YouTube is just an extension of what happens when communities discover each other rather than you. So the old internet that we talked about 10 years ago was a connection of people to do things. And now it's a connection of people to be with people. What next? Well, when you start connecting in the things, being with things, the RFID world, then we start getting a different kind of future. And in the meantime, you'll see a whole load of things going in and out of fashion. I mean, who wants, uh, uh, can you imagine anything more absurd to have a, uh, an internet t a screen on your fridge door? Oh, excuse me, I'm just trying to do the menu. I need the milk, thank you very much. Well, here's another one. This is Intel's favorite. This is uh, an Intel device built into the surfboard so you can get your email on the beach. Great. <laughs> and then there's another reality check. Here, yeah, put your hands up if you have more than one remote control in your home. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, well, you know what? Uh, you can buy these things for free euros. Put your hands up if you have one. Put your hands up if it actually works. Ah, oh, it does. Actually, I've got one too, but it did take me a week to get it to work. You see, technology can do all kinds of things for us, but once again, we have to think what people actually want and need.